So here you can see we've emptied the uh, win main function inside of our exported function. The first thing we're going to do is set up a couple of variables, then get our pointer to virtual protect. Now we're in the inline assembly. We jump over our CVS, uh, CVIP structure. We start pushing the values onto the stack that we need. We bounce off the uh, assembly structure at the end to get to the one at the beginning, save the stack pointer, return, save it again, return again. Now we do some subtraction and we've got everything we need for a call to virtual protect on the stack. We save our return value, we insert some knobs so that we've got something to zor and then we print our return values. And now we're going to look at it in the debugger. Here we are with our virtual protect call. It's setting up the, the variables. Now we do our bouncing around to save the instruction pointer. That's our call. That was our call to virtual protect. And now we print the values. The return value is one for success. And our old protection value. And you can see that the Zor worked back there if you go and watch the knobs disappear. Now we're on to our NetSH breakpoint on load library. And we're stepping through, keeping an eye on the uh, bottom right hand corner where we see what DLLs are getting loaded. See if we see anything interesting. And here we are, WLAN config. So let's take a look at loaded modules now. We've got WLAN API also. I'm guessing we want to take a look at WLAN API. We open it up in IDA. Look at that, we've got WLAN hosted network. Uh, functions. So now we've got this uh, little Ida Python script I threw together to get the relative virtual addresses of the functions. Uh, we grab the segments addresses so that we uh, find out what the base address for the DLL is. Then we subtract the function addresses from that base address in case it's based somewhere else uh, in memory or based somewhere else in Immunity Debugger. We found the 48 functions and we saved it to a text file. Now when we open up Immunity Debugger, I've got a uh, got a little Python script I put together there too for breakpointing all the functions. We get our uh, base of the image and uh, Immunity Debugger reports the base of the uh, section, not the base of the DLL, so that's what the subtraction is for. And then we breakpoint on all these addresses and we send the log window that we breakpointed them. Now when we uh, run breakpoint functions and check our... Uh, we're turning off the breakpoints on load library and we check our breakpoints in WLAN API and it, they all seem to be there. Now we continue execution. I've got a couple of extra breakpoints set in WLAN config. I got those there by uh, looking at the call stack and backing up a bit. Looks like we've got some uh, strings set up there so that we can parse the command line argument. So that might be an interesting API to reverse if you wanted to do all this in one function call instead of several. And now we can see in the uh, bottom right or next to EIP which functions we're hitting as we run through. 
and we can see the order that uh, NetSH notifies us of our settings changes. We restart the application, got our breakpoints set. Then we take a look at, uh, I got a little, it, it's they, they're not actually undocumented, but I examine the stack values as if we were trying to reverse these functions with some comments beside so that we have an idea of what I'm looking at. First value will just uh, doesn't seem to change. The second value is null. Uh, the third and fourth values are pointers to locations on the stack. They don't appear to be meaningful values, so they're probably uh, probably return values. We could find out if uh, null is required to be null by playing with it in uh, by editing it on the stack. If we wanted to find out if things are actually return values, we could uh, run until return and then go back to those memory locations. And we've got WLAN set property. And if we look at the uh, values in the stack, and then we uh, we can come down and see where they point. And sometimes it's a pointer to a pointer, so. Anyway, now we're on to our next set property. Our first set property was the uh, setting the allow permission. The second one is setting the SSID. The uh, then we've got our call to set secondary key to actually set the key. and we've got our free memory and close handle calls at the end. And we're not going to run through implementing all of them, but uh, it just gives you an idea of how to approach the problem. And that doesn't represent properly because it's got Unix-like uh, line endings. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Close all the windows and switch over to uh, switch over to the Linux portion of the desktop to get the uh, to get that recording going. What we're doing here is uh, we're checking to see what the uh, we're getting ready to see what NetSH is going to uh, report as our current parameters. I was looking for the WLAN hosted executable, but having a moment there. set the mode to disallow. Now I'm having that same moment again with trying to find the executable. I'll wind up pulling it across here in a moment. was at the bottom, but I was blind and moving too quickly, so. Alright, here we are. We're showing it's disallowed. We've got WLAN set up. We run it. And now it's set to allowed. If 
we take a look at the source there, we've got uh, setting up our pointers and our nulls and static variables. And for whatever reason, when I tried to get uh, open handle by uh, by name, it kept goofing up. So I wound up getting it by ordinal instead, and that worked fine. Sometimes uh, when you're implementing these and uh, 